There are a lot of reasons the fight scenes in Iron Fist just didn't work. One that came up time and again is how they did weapon disarms in the fights. Basically, the disarms came down to, then you lose your weapon because the director said so. Uh oh, a knife! How dangerous! Don't worry, I know this great disarming technique where all you do is push your skin against the blade and the guy drops the knife. You can see in this clip that... Ugh, wait. There, now you can see. This ninja draws a gun, but then he has his cuticle poked and he drops it. Oh, can't defend against the cuticle poke. This guy manages to hold onto his gun while falling down an entire flight of cement steps. Oh, but Danny Rand is going to hold your wrist and press against the barrel of the gun. My one weakness. This isn't to pick on Iron Fist. I'm going to offer solutions, but first I want you to see just how bad it is that these are very obviously, and then you drop your gun because the director said so. It's not just guns. It's so obvious that the director said, and then you do that thing you see in movies all the time where you uh, spin the sword around and it disarms them. Oh, just watching this, I can hear the choreographer lamenting, saying, then you just open your hand and the sword goes flying because uh, the director said so. In this shot, Danny pins both the weapons with his forearm, which is kind of neat, but then I think they discovered that uh, his arm isn't long enough to go all the way from here to hit the guy in the chest while standing in this position. So they changed it for the next shot, but now it looks like why the hell did the guy let go of his weapon with his left hand? The only reason he drops it is because the director said so. Oh no, dangerous weapons, what do we do? Whew. There, glad we got rid of that sense of danger. Ah, another gun. But remember to not put your finger on the trigger because we don't want that sense of danger. Danny grabs the gun and now it's out of the guy's hand for reasons. So he grabs the barrel of the gun, moves it to the left, starts to use his left hand, but then he stops. Once he stops using his left hand, oh, there's a big surge of pain and the guy has to let go of the gun. This one's my favorite. He bird person jumps off the top rope, grabs the guy's forearm, and brushes his arm up against the butt of the handle? And the thing goes flying. Good luck retrieving your gun from fucking orbit. How about we escalate things? Here's the leveled up version that you see in a lot of comic book movies and shows. The old gun falls apart because the director said so. Like he grabs the guy's wrist and he just touches the gun and it falls apart like it was never assembled in the first place. This is a case of the director very obviously seeing something like Lethal Weapon 4 and saying, hey, let's do that thing where he takes the gun apart. But instead of putting the work in to actually find a way to do that, it just becomes it falls apart because the director says so. So what about solutions? Could any of this be avoided? Could any of it be solved on set at the time without any extra shots or changing the choreography entirely? Let's rifle through some solutions and see just how easy this would have been. Problem, using his skin against the blade to get rid of the knife. Solution, there's a wall in the background. Turn the actors a little bit so the guy can back up and sandwich the guy between himself and the wall. Then he has another free arm. He can use two hands to do something to get rid of the knife. Guys, seriously, just turn the little slap into a punch. If he punches the back of the guy's hand and the show's called Iron Fist, it'll work. It'll at least work better than a slap. Or, you know, make the disarm happen with the kick and then do a move after that. Have this guy drop the gun while falling down the stairs. Then when he gets to the bottom, either Danny Rand doesn't have to disarm him or the guy tries to get his gun back and the fight becomes something less cliched. It becomes Danny trying to prevent the guy from getting his gun instead of trying to disarm him in the first place. He can still end up getting him in a joint lock and everything else can be the same. This one doesn't need a solution unless you let the guy put his finger on the goddamn trigger. This guy doesn't even start to do his attack until Danny is way past this table. Then we can see his attack doesn't go past the table anyway, so he never would have hit him in the first place. How can we fix the weapons being disarmed? The solution to this is don't be an idiot. Here's my personal favorite solution though, because this was, in my opinion, one of the best fights in the series. There's no sword disarm happening here. How about you ask the woman who is very clearly a sword expert, who you are already paying, who is already on set, and who obviously knows more than you do. The overall solution as a director isn't to say, ah, I don't know of weapon disarm, so I guess we can't have it. And it's not to say, well, then you lose your weapon because the director said so. The solution is maybe to ask the people who know more about martial arts than you. No doubt this woman would have known a dozen ways to get rid of this sword so that you can do the rest of the fight the way you want. And if you recognize that the people with martial arts experience are going to have better ideas than you, you would have something better than this. The 
last thing you want is to have to explain to your actors and stunt crew, uh, then you drop it because the director said so. This is where I would usually tell you to watch another video, but I've been working really hard on some cool designs, so I'm gonna tell you instead to check out my merch. If fight scenes are your jam, there's a link in the description.